Hello everyone and welcome to my Christmas special. Yes, the Christmas season is finally upon us. Christmas comes but once a year and believe me, it is my very, very favorite time of year. See, the wonderful thing about Christmas is that it isn't just a one day thing. It is the entirety of the Christmas season, the few weeks leading up to it, that make Christmas so freaking awesome. Freaking sweet. The Christmas decorations are up, you walk around in the evening, you see people have put Christmas lights on their fences, it seems like Christmas carols are playing everywhere, all the classic Christmas movies keep coming up in your Netflix suggestions, and all of it carries with it the promise of that day, that one glorious day where you and your dearest family and friends and perhaps some who are not so dear come together for frivolity, food and above all, fun. Yep, that's the thing about Christmas. It's fun. Whether you adhere to the true meaning of Christmas, so a celebration of the day that Christ was born, or you take the more secular route, so while not necessarily going to church, indulging in the message of love and togetherness that Christ was so intent on spreading, it's meant to be a truly fun day. And for your average rational-minded person, it is. But there are some people who hate fun. There are some people out there who, even in the midst of the joy and jubilation of the Christmas season, are so miserable that they simply cannot bear to see everyone else around them so happy. Regardless of the general joyousness led to everyone by the Christmas spirit, these people make it their mission to poke a hole in that bubble of buoyancy simply because not only can they not stand to see other people around them having fun, they can't stand the concept of fun itself. Because if people are having fun, you can't control them, and these people are all about control. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm pretty sure you can guess. <laughs> Every year, the SJW left finds something to complain about when it comes to Christmas. Every. Single. Year. A couple of years ago, the big one was when Starbucks, home of politically correct beverages, decided to take the words Merry Christmas off its holiday cups. Then, of course, there were the Obamas who insisted on having Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings on their family Christmas cards rather than Merry Christmas. Really, every year there's the push and pull between conservatives and so-called progressives over whether or not to say Merry Christmas, which is really, really dumb of the progressives. All that saying Merry Christmas is doing is marking the occasion. You don't have to be a Christian to enjoy Christmas, and saying Merry Christmas in itself it pretty much means Happy Holidays because the period of time is a holiday to celebrate Christmas. They are so stupid. Anyway, this year there were a couple of big fun-destroying initiatives by the Uber lefties. The first was the banning of the Christmas classic Baby It's Cold Outside by Ohio radio station WDOK. Why? because some mingy, joyless hand-flapper lefty rang up and said they had an issue with it. Now, for anyone who for some reason doesn't know the song, it's kind of fun and it's flirty and it depicts the kind of coy, hard-to-get banter of two people in love. It is a lovely song. However, every year, every single year, a couple of idiots get together and decide the song is about date rape. <laughs> that is so lame! But with the advent of the Me Too movement, their opposition to the song was particularly potent this year. A couple of other radio stations found themselves in the same unfortunate position. However, after 96.5 in San Francisco decided to ban the song at the request of a few mingy little SJWs, they received a huge backlash on social media, far bigger than any set of complaints they received. And when KOSI in Denver was umming and eyeing about banning the song, they decided to poll their listeners first. After 15,000 votes, they found that 95% of them said they thought the song should stay on the airways. And that is quite a comprehensive sample. 
The opposition to this song also proves the radical left's inability to comprehend nuance. First off, this song is contextual. In the 1940s, when the song was written, it was absolutely frowned upon for a woman to stay over at her suitor's place. And so the conundrum the woman in the song is facing is that she really does want to keep socializing with her beau, but she knows that the social ramifications will be enormous. That's why she goes on about her mother worrying and what will the neighbors think, etc. And what he's doing is providing her with an out and therefore an excuse to say, you know, baby, it's cold outside, it's bad out there, you're much better off staying here. It's not about date rape, nor does it raise issues of consent. It's just a lovely song. It also proves that the people who clutch their pearls over this song have no idea how to interpret music. When it comes to a song, the melody does 50% of the storytelling. It's not like a poem or a piece of prose. And in this lovely ditty, the melody is fun and flirty and sweet and jazzy and ends with a lovely harmonic flourish. It's not a date rapey melody. And considering all of this, I just think that anyone who interprets this song as anything other than a lovely cheeky classic song about romance has a filthy mind. The second thing that happened this year, however, actually really did surprise me. Apparently, the little story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is offensive because it's allegedly a parable about racism and bigotry. The 1964 classic animated film, which has aired every year for the past 54 years around Christmas, started a massive Twitter backlash with viewers huffing and puffing that Rudolph was marginalized and bullied for his nose, and so was his friend the elf who wanted to be a dentist and how terribly they were treated. HuffPost created a little video about it, of course. Now, I couldn't tell how much of the video was tongue-in-cheek, but it was a good indicator that people weren't joking when they were tweeting their displeasure. But the thing is, of course the tale is about bigotry. That's the whole point of the story. Two people who are ostracized for their differences stay resilient and remain true to themselves, eventually save the day, and are therefore accepted and celebrated. That's the lesson the story tries to teach that differences should be tolerated and that ostracizing people is harmful and cruel. Aren't you gonna laugh at my nose too? I think it's a handsome nose. Much better than that silly false one you were wearing. It's terrible. It's different from everybody else's. But that's what makes it so grand. So I don't actually know why the SJWs hate it. I mean, surely they would love it considering it represents all the stuff they've been quacking on about. Or maybe they just don't want anything negative or contentious on TV that could possibly elicit a sad emotion from viewers. I don't know. Either way, this is definitely the weirdest Christmas constipation I have heard so far. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for other ways you can support me.